thank you, thank you very much for having me here. And um, and actually, it's very good to see a little bit the faces of the people I will see for the next three years, since uh, uh, in September I'm moving to Montreal. Uh, okay, so the um, uh, so my, the idea of I mean the the plan is this. I would like to talk about a few problems. Uh, that you guys know maybe and uh, and and put them in in under the perspective of group actions in 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 uh, in low dimensional topology so so this is uh, this is what the focus is about here is the uh, actions of groups especially finite groups especially uh, z2 the group with two elements over uh, um, many folds of dimension 3 and 4 and uh, how these uh, uh, problems about group actions uh, are related to some problems we are all familiar with or with with which I would like you to familiarize. And uh, so, okay, the, the first problem I think, um, I mean, Duncan knows, and, and if you went to some of Duncan's talks, he most probably mentioned the, the, the slice ribbon conjecture. So this is a problem proposed by Fox, and it's about deciding, uh, I mean, I'm, I'm not going to state it completely, but I mean, uh, the problem is, uh, uh, is about deciding what not in S3. Uh, so when I say a not, I mean like a smooth uh, knotted curve in S3. Um, uh, what not in S3 bound a smooth disk uh, delta inside the four ball, okay? So delta pro pro properly embedded, meaning that the boundary of delta is precisely the intersection of delta with before, and this is precisely the knot uh, with the boundary of before, sorry. And this is precisely the knot. And uh, I mean, it's conjectured that these knots uh, all appear as a boundary of certain uh, um, uh, 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 singular surface inside the, the tree sphere uh, with, with a very specific uh, uh, type of, uh, of singularities. And these this surfaces are called the ribbon Ribbon surfaces. Now, I don't want to. I don't want to talk much about uh, ribbon surfaces. I'm. 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 I'm just gonna um, uh, um, talk a little bit about the problem of deciding what knots bound uh, smooth disks. This, these are called slice knots. Okay, and uh, so we have very little understanding about this con about slice knots, but we have many results about. Uh, establishing the conjecture. In particular, uh, uh, the, the, the um, uh, uh, slice knots have been completely understood uh, when you restrict uh, yourself to the class of uh, um, two bridge knots. Hmm. This was done by Liska and uh, in uh, 2000 something, I think, uh, sorry, I'm not being, I'm not gonna be very precise with the, but anyway, it was uh, um, uh, done by Liska in the early um, 2000s. And, and, uh, uh, and this proof basically goes as follows. So let me uh, illustrate the proof of Liska uh, with one example. So you take, consider the, the, knot t, uh, the torus knot T35. Uh, this, you can think it as a, um, uh, the, the, um, the link of a plane curve singularity, if you are familiar with that. And, uh, and, 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 and I would like to prove that this knot doesn't bound a smooth disk inside the four ball. So, so the, the, the idea uh, in, in, in Liska's paper, uh, I mean, this is not a two bridge knot, but uh, the technique, I mean, is pretty uh, sort of uh, general. And it has been used by many authors in many other classes of knots, uh, I think, uh, and, and uh, like uh, um, Anna Lejuona, uh, Paolo Aceto, and many, many uh, Brendan Owens, and also Duncan has, uh, lots of work about this, and and the, the idea is this: that you have you're not uh, in in S three, and um, and then you consider the double branch cover, and uh, in this case, this is a Briscoe sphere with parameters two, three, five. Indeed, if you have the, the link of a plane curve singularity, the double branch cover also is always the link of a surface curve, uh, a surface singularity. Uh, with the equation z squared equal to the polynomial. And in this case, you get um, the Briscoe sphere, sigma 235. And now the idea is this. Suppose by contradiction that uh, the knot bounds a disk inside the four ball, uh, then you can consider the double branch cover of the disk. And the boundary of this guy is exactly the double branch cover of the knot. 
So now the idea is this one, uh, uh, that, uh, if, uh, if, um, uh, that if delta is, is not just a surface, but it's a disk, uh, uh, then um, um, see, uh, the double branch cover of the disk is a rational homology, is a rational homology ball, meaning that it has the same rational homology of, uh, uh, of the four ball. Okay. So now, uh, now you make this, uh, this uh, uh, crucial observation. Uh, the double branch cover of uh, um, the three, five torus knots is the Briscoe sphere, sigma two, three, five, and this is the boundary of uh, the E8 plumbing. And now the idea is that you can take uh, the, the um, uh, so this, uh, this, sorry, I wanted, I meant the opposite. So it's the boundary of the eight plumbing. So you can take consider the eight plumbing and glue it to to the rational ball. Okay, so the double branch cover of the disk that we assume by contradiction it exists. Okay, then we we make the gluing happening, and we get a closed four manifold. Okay, and uh, in the construction of this four manifold, I I. Uh, uh, I, I used the fact that the knots bounce uh, uh, a slice disk, uh, bounce a smooth disk inside the four ball because uh, the piece I'm 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 past, pasting here it's it's a uh, uh, it's the double branch cover of the disk. Okay, and um, okay, so now now you get this four manifold, and this is a cl closed smooth four manifold, and uh, and there is a theorem by Donaldson. Saying that. Uh, um, uh, saying that uh, if uh, X is a closed smooth, smooth for manifold, then is intersection form uh, that is a pair, the pairing on H two uh, given by by Poincaré duality is diagonalized. And um, and and this means, um, uh, but on the other end, uh, the 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 EO, D8, uh, uh, plumbing, uh, uh, the, the intersection form of the E8 plumbing is not diagonalizable. Plumbing is, cannot be diagonalized. Okay. Okay, and uh, so so you reach the contradiction, and uh, the contradiction was originated by the fact that we could take the, uh, we, the, the in the construction of the four many, uh, I mean the uh, was uh, was originated in the construction of the four manifold in the moment when we took the double branch cover of, of the slice disk. So now the point is uh, um, uh, that uh, and and uh, the real the real point of the construction is that when we glue this piece. Uh, the double branch cover of the disk. We don't we don't change the intersection form of the E8 plumbing. Okay, and uh, um, the point is that this same technique would have worked if uh, um, if uh, if the the double branch cover of uh, uh, if if the, the the four manifold we passed here W. I mean, the only thing we use is that the double branch in this construction is that the double branch cover of the not bounds a rational homology ball. So, and uh, uh, and uh, and the way we produce the rational homology ball, we said, oh, okay, if the knot is lies, then the double branch cover of the slice disk produces the the rational homology ball. But you see, this rational homology ball can come from somewhere else. And uh, and and if you and if for some reason that is unrelated to knot theory, uh, the double branch cover of your favorite knot doesn't uh, uh, does bound the rational homology ball, but the knot you are dealing with is not slice. Uh, uh, then you can uh, 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 then you can use this method and you get no obstruction. So no obstruction from this method if uh, uh, sigma k is the boundary of a QH before, meaning a rational homology ball, um, uh, independently. From not theory. Okay, you see, this is a question about three, three plus one dimensional topology, as I call it. It's like a question about three manifolds bounding four manifolds, 
And, and this leads to another question, uh, and another celebrated question in low dimensional topology, that is uh, uh, the question of, uh, uh, in the Kirby list, asking uh, uh, what, uh, what rational homology spheres. Uh, bound rational homology for. Okay. Okay. Very good. And uh, so, so you see, this technique of Liska uh, as can can have a critical failure. And and uh, like the typical case, I mean, if you are familiar with this, is when you have a knot that uh, uh, is not slice, but it has a mutation that is slice. In that case, the double branch cover doesn't change because a mutation is this operation on knots that doesn't change the double branch cover. Uh, so um, uh, you see that you're not, your favorite knot is, is, not, is not slice, but it has a mutation that is slice. And, uh, and, and the double branch cover of the slice disk of this, uh, of, uh, of this friend of your favorite knot, then, uh, I mean, gives you a rational homology ball to uh, uh, bounding the double branch cover of your favorite knot. So, um, so actually, there can also be uh, some question. Uh, I mean, the reason of failure of, of this technique can also be uh, related uh, to, to some deep not theoretic uh, um, uh, reasons. Okay. So okay. Now the point. I mean, now I wanna. I want. I want to switch a little bit uh, perspective here and and say uh, and and point this out. In doing this, in, in applying this this uh, Liska technique, we are somehow throwing out some information because. The rational homology ball coming from the double branch cover of the disk, it, it's very peculiar because, uh, for example, uh, the double branch cover of a knot comes with, uh, uh, with the covering evolution action, right? So the double branch covering of uh, a knot is, is, uh, is naturally a two or default. So uh, the sigma k, the double branch cover of a knot, uh, is uh, uh, naturally, uh, I mean, as uh, a two or default. I mean, meaning. Uh, that it comes, uh, i.e., it comes uh, with a Z2 action. Okay. And this is the action of the covering involution. And then you see, if you're not bound a, a smooth disk, then you take the double branch cover, and this gives you a rational homology ball. Uh, and there is a, a, and and, there, and and this rational homology ball is not just a rational homology ball. It has also a very uh, it has also a crucial property. Um, uh, the the, in, the covering involution um, tau from sigma k to sigma k extends over. Uh, the double the the double branch cover of the disk. So this leads to this question of uh, equivariant low dimensional topology. If you want, that is, um, what uh, uh, suppose you have um, uh, y a three manifold with a z two action. And W, uh, um, and and suppose you know that uh, Y bounds a rational homology ball. The question is: uh, Is there uh, one? Uh, is there a rational homology ball where? Uh, we can extend the action. Sorry, I, I have a question. Sure. Um, so, so do you also want for uh, the fixed point set to be one dimensional, like a, a closed curve? Sure, 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 sure. This is, uh, uh, yeah, this is, I'm being sloppy. So yeah, uh, you can, um, I mean, in the case of three main, uh, of, in the case of not theory, indeed, the Z2 action is not totally random. The fixed point set is, a, is, a, is, a, is one dimensional. And I'm also asking that, uh, um, and, and of course, I mean, the rational homology ball that comes from the double branch cover of the disk also contains a smooth disk and uh, uh, that where, where uh, also contains, yeah, uh, a smooth disk bounding the fixed point set 
and somehow the involution doesn't just extend over it, it extends with that um, with a disk as fixed point set. So uh, indeed, uh, uh, you can even be more precise in asking this question if you are in, in if you assume the perspective of, of an off theorist. But this is a question you can ask in general. And there are some also nice results in the case of uh, um, actions uh, uh, that have no fixed points or have isolated fixed points. So um, so indeed, yeah, so you, you are right. This is uh, asking questions about, I mean, assuming things about the uh, the fixed point set can be essential according to what are your, uh, what's your perspective. But uh, it's interesting to study the problem in its full generality. Okay, did I answer? Cool, okay. So uh, this is, a, uh, this is a, um, okay. So this is a question about um, uh, group actions. Okay, so then uh, let me uh, switch topic and to another topic that um, can be of interest of low dimensional topology, and this is exotic structures on four manifold. Okay, so uh, uh, th there is this problem in low dimensional topology in, in, in dimension four uh, asking. Uh, um, uh, if a given for if a given four manifold has more than one differential structure, uh, we know from from Milner that, uh, that this phenomena exists uh, also in high dimension. And uh, but when they exist, they are always finite in nature. Meaning that, uh, for example, he proved that uh, the sphere S seven has twenty seven different uh, dif dif differential structures. So uh, in in dimension four, this uh, this a uh, finiteness uh, uh, sort of result uh, breaks down, and we actually um, uh, um, and where for example you have the K three surface, and this has a, um, a uh, that is a, an algebraic surface, smooth, and and this guy carries like a, a plethora of, of of, uh, different different differential structures and uh, and we know some operations you can make on the four manifold to change the differential structure uh, namely there is this uh, fin to stall and turn surgery or i don't know how you call it and so there are there are there are some sort of uh, uh, there are a whole bunch of different construction people people used in the years to produce uh, exotic structures um, but uh, i mean we know that somehow there is a i mean they they all in the end somehow uh, i mean not not all of them. I mean, but the, the way the way you do it in the end is 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 this one is this one. So so uh, a core. Uh, you use this this uh, these uh, these objects that are called corks. So a cork is a four manifold uh, together with an involution of its boundary. So uh, C is a, a smooth compact smooth compact. Uh, contractible for manifold and uh, tau is an involution of its boundary and um, uh, usually c is assumed to be a stein c so this usually assumed to be stein uh and uh, uh tau in evolution okay uh okay so once you have such a gadget uh you you call it uh, uh this, this gadget is what people call a cork and these are the get the gadgets you can use to change a different the differential structure on, on a four manifold uh, uh be, i mean but but you have to i mean you don't always get uh, a different different uh, okay so once you have such a gadget you can perform this operation that is called cork twist And, uh, and the idea is that you, you take your favorite four manifold, you want to prove it has different, uh, uh, a couple of different uh, uh, differential structures. So you do this. So this is a closed four manifold. You search an embedding of a cork inside the four manifold. And then you do this, you remove the image of the embedding And you pass back, you paste back uh, uh, the piece you removed uh, with the, by twisting the gluing map using the involution on the boundary of C. Okay, so you, you, you embed C as a 
for manifold with boundary inside your fabric for me. So you have a target for manifold you wanna, uh, that has a, differ a given differential structure. Now you wanna produce a new one. So, so you do this, you produce a cork, then you embed the, the ground for manifold inside your, uh, uh, your target for manifold. Then you remove this the cork and you glue it back using the, diff the, the uh, diff using a different uh, a gluing map. And the gluing map is prescribed by by the tau uh, of the cork. Okay. So this this uh, this is uh, uh, what I'm gonna call uh, X twist. And uh, this is this is this four manifold turns out to be homeomorphic to uh, X four based on 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 Friedman uh, theorem and. Uh, um, uh, but but uh, uh, and if tau extend over the uh, the cork, uh, actually it's diffeomorphic. On the other, so so this leads to the following definition. Uh, a cork c tau is called trivial if uh, tau extends uh, to an involution tau twiddle of the cork. Okay, so if you have this extension, so if the if uh, the uh, if the cork is trivial, um, then then the cork twist uh, when you do the cork twist, you don't change the differential structure. On the other hand, if the cork is non-trivial, uh, then uh, uh, then you have a method. Uh, to uh, then you have a method to produce some potentially different uh, 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 differential structures on 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 your uh, on uh, on your four manifold. So so to carry on this program, you need uh, a few things. First of all, you need a machine to produce corks, and there are many constructions. These have been studied by Akpulut. Then you need to uh, to know methods. How, I mean, you, you need to come up with ideas about uh, Im embedding your your favorite corks inside. Uh, um, your target for manifolds where you want to build, uh, 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 where, where you want to twist the differential structure. And finally, uh, you, 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 uh, you need uh, two more things then. Then you need to prove that your quarks are somehow non-trivial. And this, this tells you that uh, um, somehow you're going in the, in, in the right direction of, uh, um, of twisting the differential structure. So the, the point in the end is to decide, the question is decide, Sorry, I have another question. Sure. Um, so does it, do you really need for it to extend to an involution or do you just- uh, No, you just need it to- Just a diffeomorphism, right? You don't, you want it, you just don't want it to extend to diffeomorphism, but it doesn't yeah. have to be. Yeah, I mean- if I mean, it, When it, does it- It okay. can extend to an homeomorphism. You just don't want it to extend to a diffeomorphism. And maybe it doesn't square to the identity, but that, no. Yeah, sure. So you are really catching all my. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I'm being, I'm being sloppy. I, I, I recognize that. It's just I want to say many things. And uh, thanks for the question. Yeah, indeed, you don't need, uh, you don't need it to extend to an involution. Okay. Yeah, so I'll just so, ask, ask a quick question. I don't want to uh, sure. derail you in this, but uh, what's the importance of involution? Of the as opposed oh, no, 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 there is no importance. In fact, in fact, when I said uh, it's usually assumed to, assumed to be Stein and tau square to be the identity, uh, that's not the case. Indeed, there is a very nice paper that came up in 2016 by, by, uh, um, uh, by uh, Ruberman and other authors. I don't remember them, and I'm sorry if, I, if I, I'm, I'm really disrespecting these people because they did like great work. And uh, um, and uh, and in, the, in their paper, they come up with the, with courts that have a whole group structure, a whole group acting on the boundary, and different elements of the group generate different uh, cork. Uh, twists and, and then you can use all of them. I mean, it, it, yeah, sure, you don't need tau square to be the identity. The most famous example though, uh, uh, examples like the first one that were studied, there's a Mazur uh, uh, cork, they, they come with an evolution. So it's not, again, it's not important. It's just uh, like the most basic way also. I mean, many, many constructions generate corks with, with an involution.
direction. Okay. So this is a, again, we are going in direction of a question of, of, of uh, uh, group actions in low dimensional topology. Um, finally, I would like to point out that the study of, uh, um, uh, of the slice ribbon conjecture and the slice knots is related to the study of the knot concordance group. And this group is the group C, uh, whose elements are, 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 are knots up to concordance. Uh, meaning that uh, equipped with a connected sum. Uh, uh, by concordance, uh, I mean it's two knots, uh, K0 and K1 in S3 are called concordant, are said to be concordant. Uh, if uh, there exists uh, an embedding of a smooth cylinder inside uh, um, S3 cross I that interpolates in within the knots. Okay, and uh, um, okay, and uh, and if you if you if you look at this, uh, so th this this is a knot, and you and, and you can start. Uh, this is a group, and you can study it. It's a commutative group, infinitely generated, and there has been a lot of work recently to understand um, the algebra of, of of this group that is pretty mysterious. Is infinitely generated. It's an infinitely generated abelian group, and now you may think it's some sort of stupid object, but an infinitely generated abelian group. Can be pretty complicated, and uh, and uh, and and the study. I mean, studying this group in the end uh, um, means to understand a lot of things about knots, and uh, and this is actually what uh, what the focus is. I mean, then you know you you get results about this guy, um, and this guy. Uh, the study of this concordance group is actually uh, related. If you look it in the eyes of of Liska's construction uh, of this uh, Liska. Um, uh, uh, this Donaldson uh, abstraction that was used by um, Liska and many other people very successfully. Um, uh, they, they, there's uh, there's uh, the, the study of, uh, I mean, the, 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 the use of that te technique somehow relates this group to the homology co cobordism group, theta, um, was the elements are rational homology spheres. Uh, up to homology cobordism. And uh, yeah, by homology, yeah, I'm, I'm not gonna say, I mean, uh, I don't wanna uh, spend a lot of time talking about this, but uh, the two group, uh, just if you know about this, uh, the two groups are related by the double branch covering. So the double branch covering gives a map from the concordance group to the homology cobordism group. And, um, uh, okay, and the, and the map just take you take k and you send it to the double branch cover. And the point is that if a knot is lies in S3, then the double branch cover uh, bounds. I mean, being zero in the rational homology in the group of rational homology uh, spheres uh, means to bound the rational homology ball. So this is uh, so being zero. So the question of uh, what rational homology spheres bound rational homology ball is a question about what rational homology spheres are zero in, inside this uh, homology cobordism group. And um, uh, uh, and the point is that uh, if you have a knot that is lice, then the double branch covering bounds rational homology ball. So the double branch covering, uh, you can think it as a map in between the, within the, the two groups. Okay. And um, okay. So now the study of this um, uh, quarks and uh, what quarks are trivial, and uh, and the study of um, uh, of uh, what action extend over rational homology balls uh, naturally lead to the construct to the definition of a Z2 equivariant homology cobordist group that I'm just going to call theta. Uh, Z yeah, I'm, I'm gonna, I have to call it this way. And, uh, um, and this group has uh, the, the elements of this group. Of this group are uh, rational homology spheres together with an involution, say. And uh, and you consider two such pairs uh, up to uh, Z two equivariant homology board. Uh, meaning that you consider uh, um, two such pairs to be equivalent if there exists a, a rational homology board from one to the other. 
to from the, the uh, within the, the the ground three manifolds uh, to which uh, um, uh, the the involution extends. Okay, so if th there is an homology coboring within the two to, that interpolates not just between with, within the three manifolds but also, also uh, within the 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 uh, the, um, the covering uh, within the, the the involutions the the, the three manifolds are, are equipped with and uh, and uh, and and you see now now if you have a knot in S three what you actually get is not a map uh, uh, is not actually a map from the concordance group to the um, uh, to the uh, group of rational homology spheres so what you really get is a map in the direction of the Z two equivalent uh, um, cobordism group. Okay, so this is this is actually uh, so, uh, and this somehow is uh, like uh, um, this is somehow a lift, uh, an extension, or if you if you want, of the group of rational homology spheres. And 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 this group, uh, I mean, um, if if you are interested in that theory, this group deserves to be studied. And indeed, if you have a quark, you can think it as an as an element of the Z Z two uh, equivalent homology cobordism. And the question that the, about the cork being trivial or not, it's about the cork being zero or non-zero in the Z2 equivalent homology cobordis group. Very good. And now I get to the title of my, uh, of my talk that is symmetric knots and uh, fluid homologies. So I still didn't say what, uh, what's a symmetric knot. And uh, well, a symmetric knot is, is a knot um, together with uh, an involution uh, of S3. Uh, that, that leaves the knot invariant set wise. Okay, so there are uh, various, uh, I mean, there are, um, uh, the, one can like the split the, the uh, uh, split symmetric knots in various classes. Actually, there are five different classes. Two uh, of them are like very popular and, and they are uh, periodic knots. And little bit less periodic, a uh, little bit less popular, but very interesting, I think. Uh, and, and to which I mean, we are we are uh, we are really thinking about these days with the other people here in Vancouver uh, are um, um, uh, strongly invertible knots. And I think this is this strongly invertible case is very interesting because uh, uh, with peri about periodic knots, we have lots of, I mean, we have some techniques to study them, but uh, when it comes to strongly invertible knots, we have some classical techniques I would be happy to talk about, but I don't have time. And, uh, um, uh, and, uh, and, and this, uh, um, and this but, but this is very little. And, and, and I mean, there are very few tools to study this object apart from this, uh, uh, sort of uh, classical techniques, and um, and and we think, uh, and why I'm, me and other people that uh, um, that actually, I mean, techniques from fluid theory can be applied to study uh, strongly invertible knots and not just periodic knots. And um, okay, anyway, so this is a. Um, uh, these are the object, the, the symmetric knots. And the point is that you can define uh, in, in, uh, uh, about the point about the strongly invertible knot case that is very interesting is that you can define a homology group, cobordism group, uh, sorry, a concordance group. A Z2 equivalent a concordance group. When you restrict to this class of symmetric knots, there is a well defined notion of Z2 equivalent uh, knot concordance group and uh, um, and actually there are maps from that I'm gonna call CZ2 and actually there are maps from the uh, uh, concordant Z2 equivalent concordance group in the direction of the group of uh, um, Z2 equivalent rational homology spheres and uh, and this map, I mean, there are uh, this map is given by surgeries. So if you have a, a, a symmetric knot, you can do you can perform surgery on the knot. Uh, you, I mean, you fix the coefficient once and for all. I don't know. You do minus one surgery, and now you have a knot. Then you can do minus one surgery, and you get a rational homology sphere, actually an integral homology sphere. 
And uh, if you have a, 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 if the knot is a, a strongly invertible or symmetric in some way, uh, then you can extend the symmetry to the three manifold. And this, uh, and in the case of strongly invertible knots, where you have a well-defined notion of concordance group, uh, this construction actually um, uh, yields a, a, a map in the direction of Z two of the Z two equivalent uh, um, homology cobordism. Okay, so. Uh, so you, you see, this is this is sort of the picture. So on one on one end, there are there are some classical constructions like uh, there is this classical obstruction that can be made can made be made stronger if you move in there. I mean, if you if you somehow uh, uh, um, put some effort in studying equivalent uh, uh, three plus one dimensional topology. And when I say three plus one, I mean three dimensional topology, but also a little bit of four and vice versa. So, um, uh, so on one end, if you are if you are uh, ready to, to to jump in the study of equivalent uh, uh, um, uh, of this equivalent story in low dimensional topology, then you can sort of use this to to study some classical problems that have nothing to do with the, uh, uh, group actions. And uh, but actually, once you you you, uh, but actually there are I mean this the study of uh, uh, involutions and, and stuff also appears in, in, in classical topics in four-dimensional topology like corks and, uh, and, and exotics uh, and construction of exotic structures. But uh, yeah, again, once you enter in this framework, you, you start seeing that there are many interesting problems and uh, um, on their own, like the study of the, of the uh, um, equivalent uh, not concordance group in the strongly invertible case. Um, Okay, so this is most of. Uh, I, I, sorry, I have a yeah, question. Yeah. So, sure. so a periodic knot—that's the case where um, your your self homeomorphism on S three that you know it's some power of it is the identity, but then so so what's a strongly invertible knot again? So strongly invertible. I mean, you distinguish somehow that. I mean, roughly the distinction is this: uh, when you uh, the the involution. I mean, the involution lifts. Uh, um, leaves um, set wise fixed. I mean, th this row is an involution. Okay. Uh, the involution leaves uh, the not k set wise fixed. But uh, then, and, but then you can look at the action of. Uh, you can just look at the restriction of the involution on the not. And there are two cases when there is uh, is free from fixed points, or there are two fixed points. Okay. Okay. And somehow strongly invertible is when there are two fixed points. I mean, there are five cases. I mean, it's a, uh, uh, but it, it, it's sort of that. It's sort of uh, you have an axis. Somehow you have uh, if you have a self uh, diffeomorphism of S three, the fixed point set is is a, is, a, is a copy of the knot. Okay, and this copy of the knot, and and somehow you are rotating around it. And this copy of the knot can intersect the knot or not. If it intersects the knot, then it's strongly invertible. Okay, and. Uh, let me point out, I mean, there is an amazing paper to read uh, about this is by Sakuma. Uh, it's called On Strongly Invertible Knots. It's the first result you find on Google. And, uh, and you can find more about this and the precise definition of Z2 equivalence concordance group. Okay. So that's, uh, <laughs> that's how I, so I answer my question. <laughs> uh, there, there, uh, it, it's a very nice paper. It's sort of easy to read and, and, and very, very, very motivating, I think. And that's from where I got most of the motivation. And uh, actually, the other um, uh, in, 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 to get interested in this topic. And um, OK, I'm almost done with the, uh, uh, and, and then I, I'm going to say a few words about how you use flower theories to study uh, this. Uh, let me also uh, conclude this, uh, this, uh, this, um, uh, this, uh, this uh, sort of uh, introductory part to the problems I'm interested in uh, by saying that there has been a lot of work in, in the study of uh, group actions in four dimensional topology. And uh, so, um, you know, we are really sometimes, I mean, one has to realize that we are stepping on, on the shoulders of giants and that work before us. And um, especially there has been an extensive study of, uh, S1, of, uh, group, uh, of S1 actions on, uh, on simply connected for manifolds. And, and there are some glorious results. And there has been a lot of work by um, uh, the, the early school of gauge theory uh, and, and uh, uh, you know, there are some very nice results by Danny Ruberman and many, many other people, Jim Bryan that is here at UBC, but many, many other people. I mean, by, by citing these names, I'm misrespecting many, many people that, that uh, um, 
uh, that really uh, work hard on, on this topic, but still there are many open questions. Let me cite two without saying much about them. One is about uh, um, uh, exotic art force. For example, uh, recently Taylor uh, uh, constructed some exotic art force that do not make uh, an S1 action. So maybe one can use uh, one can distinguish exotic structures from four manifolds by saying, "Oh, look, this this uh, this I have this four manifold. It has two differential structure, and this one uh, comes with a, a Z two action, as moot Z two action. And this one doesn't have any Z two action. Okay, so this is a, a um, actually if you don't use Z two, that is sort of you use S one, for example. Taylor has this uh, uh, this construction where he constructs exotic." R force where S1 doesn't act at all. And, and, and then you can build, I mean, and, on, uh, and then you, you, can, you can build some others where you, I mean. So that, yeah, this is a question, for example, uh, to be precise. Uh, are there example of exotic R force that do not admit any smooth structure, uh, uh, sorry, any uh, smooth action? And uh, I mean, uh, faithful smooth action and uh, any non-trivial smooth action. And uh, so this is a, um, and this I found it on, on, a, on, a, on a survey online. And then there is another question that I think really deserves some attention and it is the following thing. According to the Smith, uh, um, so there was in three-dimensional topology, there was this Smith conjecture at a certain point that uh, um, if you take an involution of, uh, or actually a periodic self-diffeomorphism of, of S3, the standard, the three sphere, uh, uh, then the fixed point set is, is unknotted. Okay, so this is this is a and this was proved at a certain point, uh, and uh, uh, and the question is about uh, what happens when you look at uh, 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 cyclic group action on S four, and the uh, and the, and the, and the, and the point is that you can have a knotted fixed point set, and uh, there is this open question since nineteen seventy uh, that is. Uh, um, uh, are there properties of the Alexander polynomial of a knotted sphere? Uh, that sort of uh, tell you if this knot can be, uh, if, no, if this knotted to sphere uh, can be the fixed point set of a cyclic group action on S4. And, um, and you see, I mean, this is a sort of, and, and of course, I mean, the question is asked about the Alexander polynomial because, because we don't have many tools also to study knotted surfaces. And, uh, and, and now we are in a period in which knot surfaces are, are very fashionable and uh, so so it would be interesting to go back maybe to this question i think okay so this is what i wanted to say as an introduction and then i wanted to say uh, a few words and I, I i prepared for 60 minutes but i really don't know what uh if i can go for 60 minutes i i i assume <laughs> can i, I go it's another 10 minutes i just tell you more or less what uh uh, what what's the fluid theory part? Wait, so I mean? actually have a question about the strongly. I have I have another question about the strongly invertible part. Yeah. Um, so so what so um, so when you when you when the when you're not intersects the fixed point set in two points, mm -hmm. you in the strongly invertible case, um, had you get this z two equivariant not concordance group, but you don't. I mean, so so. How does this not concordance group depend on the fact that the, the the intersection is two points? Oh, because otherwise you cannot define the connected sum. Because you see, you have you have to define. I mean, the connected sum you can always define, sure. But then you have to build the action on the connected sum. Be, I mean, using the the z two actions on the two pieces, and 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 you know the two the two points uh, the two fixed points somehow direct you on how to on, on where to perform the connected sum. Okay, so yeah, this is this is actually the crucial point, and that's the reason why you have a strongly invertible. Uh, um, that, I mean, you have a strongly invertible not concordance group and not the periodic and not in the periodic case. Yeah, I mean, actually, I tell you, there are many uh, sort of questions uh, that uh, uh, um, you know, you know, it's there. There are many subtleties in 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 this in, in this topic, and and. Uh, um, and you know, I'm actually still learning. I, I'm gonna admit that. And um, uh, okay, so okay, good. But how did I get into this business? So this is, uh, this is the question. Okay, so the, the thing is basically what I did in my in my PhD thesis, and uh, and what I'm and, and what I'm doing now is sort of uh, um, 
extension of that. And um, uh, okay, and and basically during my PhD, at a certain point, I was studying this uh, involutive uh, uh, Heger flow homology. So. Uh, really few words about this. Given a three-manifold, uh, Orjvat and Zabu built, uh, built a, a chain complex, uh, CF minus or Y. And um, uh, actually, this, this chain complex is associated to the three-manifold and uh, a spin structure, uh, a spin C structure. But in what follows, I'm always going to use that spin C structure is spin. And uh, um, OK, and the, and the homology of this group is an, is an opt-in, is, uh, sorry, is a three-manifold invariant. Um, now, in the, when so this is Oshbat Sabo build this group, and this is this proved to be a, a, a crucial tool in the study of uh, certain questions about uh, three plus one dimensional topology. And um, okay, and this these groups are related to the cyber beaten invariants and and many other successful stories in dimension four. So uh, now Hendrix Manolescu uh, in uh, two thousand fifteen uh, or more or less during that date, because that's when I started my PhD and more or less in that period, this paper came up. Um, um, they, they show that uh, this, uh, uh, the, the, um, uh, the Floer group comes with an involution. Uh, I mean, with a, a chain map that preserves the grading and squares to the identity uh, up to chain homotopy. And then they use this to uh, um, uh, build an invariant of, uh, uh, I mean, uh, here, here uh, again, uh, S is, uh, is self-conjugate. That, that, that's what you need to build this involution. And then they use this to build uh, um, a, a, a stronger invariant um, by, by doing this thing. They, they look at the mapping cone of one plus iota. Okay, so this iota is the uh, is uh, is this map that they build in the paper, and uh, and they use it to 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 build a stronger invariant by forming the mapping cone. And what's this mapping cone thing? Is you take the the not the Heger flare group, you tensor, you extend coefficients with the group f joint q modulo q square, and then you introduce this new differential, that is the old good differential with the higher with the higher term. One plus iota. Okay, and if you are uh, familiar with the equivariant uh, uh, group cohomology, this F joint Q modulo Q square, it's sort of, uh, uh, I mean, that should make you ring a bell. And um, uh, anyway, the, 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 so you see, using this iota, somehow you can introduce higher terms in the in the Floer differential, and uh, and then you can use this. Uh, and and this is this produces strong a stronger invariant. In particular, they prove that if you compute the homology of the mapping cone, uh, you get something that has rank two. And this is, uh, and, the, and the two uh, um, free summons are concentrated in, a spe in some specific gradings that are called that, that D lower bar and D upper bar. And, um, and these two numbers uh, produce homology, co are homology cobordism invariant. So roughly speaking, and then, I mean, there are other things I wanted to say, but I really don't want to abuse your time. Um, uh, what I, um, uh, the, the, the idea I, I had in, uh, while I was writing my thesis was, wait, what if instead, if I have a, a, a self diffeomorphism of a three manifold, uh, or in general, a group acting on, on my three manifold, uh, then um, uh, tau, I mean, the involution in induce, uh, or more in general, uh, a group. Then, then tau induce a self map of the chain complex CF minus so that squares to the identity up to chain homotopy. And in general, if you have a group G acting on, on a three manifold, you can make G act on the chain complex by a chain maps. And uh, with the, and, and I mean, uh, this is a, a homotopy action, okay? I mean, you, can, you don't really make the group act, you make it act uh, up to homotopy, meaning that uh, um, uh, the map uh, G sharp uh, uh, composed
I said, so if you have like a, a, a three manifold and then you, you have uh, um, uh, a Z2 action, meaning a, a, a order two self diffeomorphism, then you can look at the action of the self diffeomorphism on the Hegel Fleur homology, and it's well defined. And um, uh, and in general, if you have a group acting on a three manifold, you have an homotopy act, a homotopy action on on the Floer chain complex. And um, and now the idea is that you can use the same technique of uh, of Hendrix Manolescu uh, to define uh, a, a a a group by looking at the higher differential introduced by uh, the covering uh, by the, the the involution. In particular, I studied this when White Tau. Is the double branch cover of a knot, and uh, tau is the covering involution. And uh, in this case, you apply this construction, and uh, um, and um, and the mapping cone turns out to be a knot invariant uh, that I call we called uh, CFB minus, uh, and the B stays for branched, and we call this Fluer branched homologies. And this is a joint paper with uh, Anders Tipschit and uh, uh, Sung Jung Kang. And um, and the thing is that uh, yeah you get a knot invariant actually if you look at the um, homology of this guy there are two towers again and uh, and these are concentrated in two gradings delta lower bar and delta upper upper bar and this give you not concordance invariants delta upper bar and delta lower bar. And actually, uh, you can show that uh, um, the delta upper bar is larger than the uh, um, uh, than the delta in, and, and and the delta lower bar is is smaller than uh, the um, uh, Owens Manolescu invariant. And we made computations of these invariants and uh, of some related gadgets. And so uh, I, I have a question. Sure. So, so um, for um, so in in the usual case, um, uh, this this delta. So, so when k is a um, a nice knot or, or even a like a quasi alternating link. Um, yeah, yeah. Then then this this delta, I mean, so the d invariant is equal to to I believe negative four times or negative one fourth times the signature. Sure, of the knot. Sure. So do you have something similar for delta lower and delta upper when K is? Uh, yeah, 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 indeed. Yeah, yeah, sure. Yeah, they are both equal to the thing. Uh, delta lower uh, for alternating knots, delta lower bar is equal to delta that is equal to delta upper bar. And then you use the result you quoted by Owens and uh, Paolo Liska, and then you prove that they, they are all equal. But there are other cases when you get something else, like uh, for Montesinos knot or pretzel knots, you compute and then you get something, some other stuff, and uh, uh, and then you can also compute for uh, um, uh, you can also compute for uh, uh, torus knots and you get zero. Uh, oh wait, so you're point. saying okay? So okay, what, 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 yeah, I mean you don't text, you don't get zero, you get the the, the delta invariant. I mean the point, the point, the real point is this. That uh, we don't just study these invariants. I mean, this is uh, I'm hiding stuff. So these invariants are some numerical things. Uh, but then there is also a group you can study. So there is a subgroup HF minus. We call it BHF minus connected. That is a group is a subgroup of the torsion of uh, this homology. And this group is a homology cobordism. It's, it's a dot concordance invariant. So there is a whole group that is a not concordance invariant. And uh, this group vanishes when a delta lower bar is, a, is equal to delta uh, upper bar that is equal to delta. So this group is zero for alternating knots and also for, uh, for uh, torus knots. And, uh, but if you compute for pretzel, you, you get something different. And if we compute it, we, we, we show how to compute this group using uh, this, uh, this construction that is called the lattice cohomology. So, so actually you can compute this group and then this group is non-trivial for, uh, for pretzel knots. And then we use this to prove some independence results. And then you understand that if it's zero on, on torus knots, so this is a sort of a bad on one, under one perspective because it's zero on a rich class of knots. 
But on the other hand, being zero for an invariant on a given class of nodes means that you some, somehow can isolate those nodes from the rest because uh, uh, up to concordance, of course. And, and uh, so this is a, this is a, this is a thing that uh, that we did, and then uh, there was a follow up of this paper by uh, um, uh, Irving Dye and uh, Abhishek Malik and uh, uh, Matthew Hedden, in which they elaborate on our technique. They extend our computations, and um, I mean they use our computation to get a new class of computations, and then they apply this to the study of quarks. And um, and and yeah, this is this is the whole story. And uh, and uh, and uh, uh, I mean this is part of the story because uh, recently uh, we are uh, I mean, we start discussing the existence of uh, in I mean these techniques can also be adapted to the study of uh, uh, the equivariant uh, not concordance group and um, uh, and indeed uh, there there are there is a sort of an equivariant tau invariant one can define. And uh, one can define also an equivariant upsilon invariant if you are familiar with the egger fleur package. I mean, this we can do both in in the uh, uh, in the uh, strongly invertible and periodic case. Actually, uh, tau is just uh, I think in the periodic case, and I mean it's a, it's sort of a, a, another story, but. Uh, uh, it's actually the same story if you look at under the perspective of engineering uh, the egger fleur machine to get invariants of uh, um, equivalent gadgets, quote, quote, unquote. Okay, and this is everything I wanted to say. So, if... well, let's thank Antonio first. Then I guess open up the floor for further questions. I mean, for a starting point, I mean, do you sort of have any concrete sort of theorem applications along the lines of this, this equivariant concordance group has such and such a property? Okay, so um, this is, uh, so yeah, sure, we can, um, I mean, in our paper sort of we, comp we, we showed that, uh, so there were some questions of, uh, um, uh, by Livingston asking what knots uh, were, uh, uh, so what happens when you take the knot concordance group and then you quotient it by uh, algebraic knots? I mean, do you get something infinitely generated? You do. And then uh, what can you say? I mean, and the, there are some examples of very specific, I mean, there is a family uh, of, um, uh, there is this family of uh, L space pretzel knots, uh, P minus two, three Q with Q odd. And uh, um, and these guys are, are supposed to be uh, uh, linearly independent in, the, in uh, the quotient of the not concordance group module algebraic knots, and nobody can prove this. And uh, so what we can prove is that if you take a positive sum of these guys, you don't get anything concordant to uh, a connected sum of, of torus knots. So the point is that we have these vanishing results for torus knots, and then you can use it this way. But it's not the full result. I mean, first of all, I mean, actually, we conjecture that vanishing is for algebraic knots in general and not just torus knots, but we cannot prove this. And, um, and also, I mean, we don't know how to deal when you do connected sum with both signs uh, of these pretzel knots, because then you can get vanishing of the invariance due to the fact that you can reverse orientation. So, so this is a problem we studied, for example. But uh, I mean, what, what really now the focus is on is proving that uh, this equivariant tau estimates the uh, equivariant slice genus. So since you have a notion of equivariant concordance, you also have some fairly interesting, uh, uh, some fairly simple and sort of interesting uh, notions of genus. Like, uh, and then you have this uh, equivariant genus, or there is this butterfly genus that was recently uh, introduced by uh, Keegan Boyle and Ahmad Hissa. And, uh, and uh, uh, what about these numbers? I mean, they have constructions using classical invariants. We think we have an invariant. Um, uh, when I say we, I, I mean, uh, this is joint work with uh, um, Abhishek Malik and uh, Sung Yung Kang and, uh, Irving die, uh, we believe that we have a notion of tau invariant, and then we believe that this is um, this estimate gives a lower bound on the. I mean, I believe. I don't. I, I'm not going to say the other people believe. <laughs> but uh, uh, the point is to prove this, and uh, we don't know because there are there can be some. I mean, there are some technical complications. You said a lower bound on. Uh... 
the classic genus of, uh, say, an octa? So the equivalent slice genus is sort of you look at all uh, like surfaces, uh, like you, you do this, you, you, you have the knock in S3. And this is the boundary of before, of course. And then you look uh, at surfaces inside before. Uh, and uh, the, the knot is symmetric. So you have also an action. And you ask if you can find a surface uh, F in before. I mean, you look at surfaces in before um, such that uh, you can extend the action to before. And, uh, and, uh, and the surface is left in the set wise. And, uh, and such surfaces exist because uh, they exist actually in S3, and then you push them inside the four ball and equivariantly. And, uh, and then uh, you ask for the minimum genus of this guy. And then there are some other questions like slightly different. There is a different flavor for this question. Is called, and, and, and there is this notion of butterfly surfaces that Keegan introduced recently. Uh, Keegan and Ama introduced recently in the paper. And, um, and that's another um, number and uh, uh, that, that one would like to understand. And uh, the point is you need the tools. Uh, what if you take uh, just a, not necessarily a symmetric knot, but then look at the two full branch cover, uh, you know, if it has genus, whatever, <laughs> say it's sliced downstairs and upstairs, uh, the thing is uh, equivariantly sliced. And um, oh, I see, because you say that that guy comes with a symmetry, and then you can, uh, yeah, that, that's, uh, yeah, that's another question that, uh, yeah, one hits naturally. And uh, we don't know. I mean, we know nothing. I mean, this, this is, I mean, this is not a completely dark room because some people notice the room, but it's still dark. I mean, it's a room that has been there and uh, uh, researchers in low dimensional topology notice that because uh, there are uh, um, uh, many of, uh, 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 there are many people that consider these questions, but sort of we didn't do because we didn't have the tools. Uh, what we, what I think is that now we have some tools and we can try to attack some of these questions, and uh, uh, and 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 you understand that once you enter this dark room, uh, there are many natural questions, and one of these is the one you made, and we have many others. It's just we are there are so many that we are losing track, <laughs> and uh, uh, um, and the point is what methods you use, and there has been this uh, uh, equivariant Donaldson obstruction that Hamad came up with, and uh, they are studying, and we are more like doing the Hegel Thing. So there is, a, I mean, I don't want to abuse your time again, but uh, uh, but there is, there can be other constructions. Uh, in particular, uh, if you have, uh, and this works also for surfaces in knotted surfaces, uh, you can look at the cotangent bundle. Yeah, I mean, uh, Hegel fluor homology counts uh, uh, JL homorphic curves inside symmetric products of Riemann curves. Uh, another way of defining invariance using symplectic topologies, so you look at the cotangent bundle of uh, uh, of I don't know, S3. And then um, inside there is the unit cotangent bundle, that's a contact manifold. And if you have a, a knot downstairs, uh, you can look at the conormal bundle, uh, the unit conormal bundle inside. And this is a Legendrian submanifold of this contact manifold. And it has a well-defined well Chekhanov Eliasberg algebra. And, um, uh, and the point is that if two knots are uh, isotopic, then their, uh, their conormal bundles are, uh, are contact isotopic. So the, there's a chekhanov yashberg algebra that is a contact invariant is indeed a, not, a differential invariant of the knot downstairs. This thing can be used also in dimension four. You can look at the cotangent bundle of S4 and you can look at the conormal bundle of a knotted sphere. And, uh, uh, and the point is that when there is a group action downstairs, you can lift it upstairs and you get a contact action on the, on the contact manifold upstairs. So this leads to equivalent contact topology. So you have a contact manifold, you have a, a, a contact action, you have an invariant, a legendrian that is left invariant by the contact action. What do you do? Is there a well-defined notion of equivariant chekhanov eliasberg algebra? Can you compute this? And um, in particular, even without the group action, you just go in S4, you look at a knotted sphere. Uh, can one compute a, a, a combinatorially uh, the Chekhanov-Eliasberg uh, algebra of the conormal bundle? 
And uh, this has been in, done in S3 with, for, for, for braids, uh, I mean, using braids presentation uh, for knots in S3. Can one do something similar for knotted spheres in S4? And uh, this is a problem like, uh, I mean, and this is like, there is no group action yet. And then you can take into account the group actions too. So uh, and this is a, like another direction one could take. I mean, um, and and you know I'm not an expert and I'm learning this uh, chicken oil iceberg business. And uh, but but you, you, I think there there can be something else too one, one can do. And it's another these are other ingredients you can define counting J curves. So this is uh, yeah. Well, let's uh, thank Antonio again. You're welcome. <laughs>